Okay, it's time to talk about batteries, battery cables, and chargers, but to start off, let's look at batteries. In front of me, I have a plain old flashlight and a couple batteries that go inside there. These are Duracell size D batteries, uh, same sort of thing, people put in flashlights all the time. And what we'll notice on here is that there's a positive end and a negative end. Now, when you put these into the flashlight, you put the positive end in first, and then you put another battery right behind it, also positive end first, and then you put the cap on. When you connect batteries, positive to negative, positive to negative in a chain, this is called putting them in series or a serial connection. When you do that, the voltage adds up. Right now, if we put a multimeter across either ends of the two batteries, we, we'd, we'd get three volts instead of only a volt and a half. Now, in some other battery setups, you might have both batteries right next to each other or parallel to each other. And then on the negative end, a power connection would go to that, go to both of them. And the same with the positive connection, go to both of the positive connections here. That's called parallel. And when we put batteries in parallel, we don't change the voltage, but we change the capacity. So if this battery holds a certain number of units of energy, and the same here, we've just doubled the units of energy, but kept it at the same voltage. This is the kind of things that we need to think about when we're working on our electric car. Now, one thing that the motor cares about is voltage. A DC motor is going to spin faster the more voltage you give it. So, if we put the batteries like this, the motor's going to spin twice as fast. If we had the batteries like this, it's not going to spin as fast, but it would be able to spin for a longer period of time. So here's where we want to start being clear about uh, a couple of terms involved with batteries and electric cars. Volts, amps, and watts. Now, I'm going to keep this nice and simple. If you're a technical person, please don't kill me on, oh, technically, you didn't have that exactly right. But commonly, people think of volts as being similar to water pressure. Uh, the higher the voltage, the faster your motor can spin. Uh, if you put your thumb over the end of a garden hose, you can increase that water pressure and you can squirt that water faster and further. Amperage is more like the width of a river, how much water is flowing down that stream. Uh, it doesn't matter how fast it's going, but just how wide the river is. Now, when we multiply volts by amps, we get watts. And essentially, watts is work. If you have a 70 watt light bulb, uh, the, that 70 watts, that's the indicator of how much energy uh, it needs to light that light bulb up, how much work is being done to light that. So if we go back to our two little batteries, and let's say we have them in series, we've just increased our voltage. But that also means to do the same amount of work, we've decreased our amperage. So even though we, ha we have the higher voltage, that means we can spin our motor faster now, but we're also drawing less power. We're really just drawing part of the power from this battery, part of the power from this battery, because uh, of that higher voltage making lower amperage. Now keep in mind that all batteries really care about is how many amps are being pulled out of them. Batteries love it when you only pull a few amps out. Uh, there's an effect, now I don't know how to pronounce this, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen so you can read it, the Pukert effect. What that means is if you draw a lot of energy or amperage out of your batteries quickly, you won't get the same total amount of energy out of that battery as if you drew that energy out slowly. So what that means is when we're driving our electric car, we wanna keep our amperage as low as possible, as much as possible, to make sure we can drive as far as possible. On the other hand, we're also gonna need that uh, high amperage for going up big hills, uh, doing any sort of hard acceleration, that sort of a thing. But by putting our batteries in series, we gain the speed advantage of the higher voltage, and we also get lower amperage because we're only drawing part of the energy out of each batteries. The only real advantage to running all the batteries in parallel would be, for example, if you only had a 12 volt charger and you wanted to be able to charge up all those batteries at the same time with just that single charger. That's not a very good reason. Another possibility might be for buddy pairs. 
Now what that means is, let's say you have batteries that they're a little bit small for what you need. You've got enough batteries to get up to your voltage. You keep putting them in series until you get up to the voltage of your car, but you still don't quite have the range. What you could instead do is buddy pairs. You take a pair of batteries, you put them in parallel, and then you put them in series to another buddy pair and another buddy pair and another buddy pair. So what batteries do you want to use in your electric car? Well, it'd be ideal to be able to use nickel or lithium ion, but those tend to be very, very expensive. In fact, the only person that I know who has lithium ion batteries in his car, when I asked him how much he paid for those, he said, about the cost of a new car. Now, my project is just a little uh, low budget, fun vehicle. Uh, no way am I gonna spend that kind of money for the batteries. What I did was I bought batteries used. They're 12 volt gelled lead acid batteries. Uh, the current configuration in the car is just six of them in series for 72 volts. It's a fairly modest car. It goes fast enough, about 45 miles an hour, which is the speed limit right outside my house anyways. But because they're used, I don't have quite as good of a range as I would otherwise. I can go about 20 miles on this configuration. On new batteries, I'd be able to go, oh, maybe 30 miles. Now among lead acid batteries, there's a number of different types. The major two divisions would be flooded, and sealed. And among sealed batteries, there's going to be gel cells, AGMs, valve regulated lead acid. Uh, there's a few differences between all of those, but the main thing to know is that the electrolyte in the battery is all sealed up. It can't spill. And in a lot of cases, those batteries can even be mounted sideways and in other different positions that you wouldn't be able to do with a flooded battery. Flooded batteries tend to be less expensive. They tend to be very durable but they do have some maintenance. Every once in a while, you have to pop the caps off and check the electrolyte level. If it's a little low, you need to add distilled water. Golf cart batteries are another fine example of a flooded battery that's very popular for use in electric car conversions. Now, you could use either six or 12 volt batteries in your car. My car is using 12 volt sealed batteries. By using the 12 volt batteries, it allows me to get to a higher voltage quicker than I would with six volt batteries. I'd need twice as many six volt batteries for the same total voltage. However, six volt batteries tend to be very, very durable. Uh, they're just uh, great workhorse batteries in the long run. And that's one reason why they've been very popular in golf carts for a long time. Now keep in mind that flooded batteries can also produce hydrogen gas, both when you charge them and when they're discharged during use. Sealed batteries don't produce hydrogen gas in typical use. Another thing that's nice about flooded batteries is that they're actually easier to charge. If they're charged at a higher voltage or amperage, some of the electrolyte can boil off, but it's not a big deal because you can replace it. You just add a little bit more distilled water. Now, some of the sealed batteries, although it's nice that uh, you can position them in different ways, you don't have to worry about the hydrogen gas. Uh, a lot of times sealed batteries are more expensive and there may be certain uh, restrictions on how you charge them. For example, gel cell batteries need to be charged at a little bit lower voltage or you can damage the electrolyte. AGM batteries a lot of times can be charged faster, which is nice, but a lot of times those are much more expensive batteries as well.